Nordic Curl has gone through a journey. Once dubbed the best hamstring exercises you can be doing to help with injury prevention to its slight fall down, which we have done a video on. But it's still a very solid exercise to add into a program. However, a new study has come for it again and showing a potentially better exercise option. So we're going to go through what that study shows and what changes you might want to make with your training to not only help with building, but also injury prevention for the hamstring muscle. So let's get into the study. This came out a few months ago and compared the Nordic curl to lengthened state eccentric training. And we will get into all of what that is shortly and how to do it. And we'll also go into the potential problems of the study and how well it would translate into practice. So it looked at muscle growth for the individual muscles involved in knee flexion and hip extension using MRI to do this. Some were high for the Nordics and others for the lengthened state training. The conclusion though was that lengthened state eccentric training is superior to the Nordic hamstring curl in inducing overall hamstring hypertrophy, sorry, hypertrophy for any Americans out there getting in there before the comments, and that it's potentially contributing to better sprint performance improvements and protection against hamstring strain injuries over Nordics. This doesn't explain the whole story though, which we will get into shortly, but let's look at how this can change training. So applying this to training. So what is the lengthened state eccentric training? Well, it's fitting into a lot of the evidence about the importance of stretch for muscle growth, for all muscles. And it's basically having the end range of the movement in a more stretched position. We are going to go through two ways in which you could do this in a normal gym setting to add it into your training. I've seen a few things where it's just showing a seated hamstring curl as the alternative to the Nordic but that isn't enough. This study did use the seated hamstring curl, but it was modified to put the hip into more flexion, which will then give the stretch and not just a run of the mill seated hamstring you'd find in a gym. It also used isoinertial resistance, so like a flywheel, not exactly the same as just normal weights. So that needs taken into account as well. So how to do lengthened state movements. There's two options here. You can do it using a cable machine laying on your back, have your hip flexed, feel the stretch in your hamstring as you go up, and then flex the knee, but keeping your knee in place as you do it, all in a controlled manner. Another better way to do it is to modify the seated hamstring curl yourself. You can do this on any by leaning your body forward to create that hip flexion. Put your hands behind you, holding the pad to keep you in position, and then when raising the leg up, making sure it's enough to feel the stretch in your hamstring at the top. A few pointers with this is to keep your back as straight as you can, really sticking your bum backwards and keep your head up to take off any neural tension around the sciatic nerve, which may limit your range. The hamstring attaches to the ischial tuberosity right on those sit bones. So the more that you can get that bum backwards and the pelvis tilted, the easier you'll get the stretch. You basically just want to do it where you're feeling the stretch in the hamstring at the end range. So let's look at potential problems with that study and the conclusion. The main one is that it was done with participants that had no history of systematic exercise training of any kind in the last 18 months. So basically done with newbies. And an issue a lot have with the research showing superiority of stretch training is that it is done in newbies. So it would be interesting to see how the results may be different in trained individuals because a lot of the time, especially for injury prevention, or focusing on optimizing muscle building, that will mainly be done in this population. So what's the main takeaway here? Well, we would suggest to do both of these exercises. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Do Nordics, and if doing the seated hamstring curl anyway, just adapt it like we've shown so you get more stretching. If you're struggling with Nordics as you don't have a friend to help you, then check out this video here, where we go through five ways to do Nordic curls when you're on your own using different gym equipment.